I know how to vacuum mom and dad, Summer. I've been doing it for six months. But why would you need to vacuum anything if time is frozen? Isn't everything frozen in time? If the molecules of the clothing are frozen, how do you even move them? How does the washer work? Now that I think about it, how are you even breathing time frozen oxygen right now? It's not my fault we froze time on a humid day. But the moisture would also free. You know what? Let's just add five cents for the paradox of freezing time and move on, shall we? You have dropped so many balls, man. I mean, probably just two. Although with the radiation, Rick has probably exposed Morty too with all the dimension hopping. Could be more, I suppose. Put a shirt on your dumb dad and let's get this dumb universe rolling. But how did Morty get Jerry's arms through the sleeves? Sleeves just don't magically form around the arms when you throw a shirt on, no matter how many times you pray for it. When we pulled up, I could have sworn the house was completely trashed. Yeah, well, everyone in the family knows that Rick can do incredible things, so why don't you immediately think, Rick must have stopped time and fixed the house before we walked in. I'm just gonna put it on the floor and uh, kick it on over to you. Or you could toss Jerry the money so it doesn't look quite as awkward. I know Jerry is supposed to be dumb, but Beth isn't, and she's a doctor. There's no way she's not checking foreheads for temps or at the very least asking questions about this odd behavior. Whatever this is. Also, convenient machine that can let you know if there's been a split in time on the off chance you freeze time long enough for this to be a possibility is convenient. The two of you made us uncertain! What are you what talking about? English? 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 Exactly! What does that mean? Uncertainty is a pretty broad spectrum. For instance, if Morty was uncertain about a math equation, or if Summer was uncertain about what clothes she should wear for that day, would that cause a time rift? I get that Rick is an ass when it comes to explaining things, but if this issue of uncertainty is really that important, then maybe you should try a little harder, or at least have a sheet with rules on it. Cold Stone Creamery is the best. Marble Slap Creamery shaming. We, we have to tell the cops you were driving. Why would you have to tell the cops anything? Or even call the cops? Do you call the cops when you run over a skunk or a squirrel? I believe the saying goes, if the car will still steer, you're in the clear. And we've got about four hours to be is. What a very specific time frame you just happen to know for convenient tension building purposes. All right, since this time crystal exists in both possibilities, and since it's impossible that I didn't nail this. Vanity. It's definitely my favorite sin. Naming your animal hospital, Animal Hospital. Do cars not need license plates in this world? But how will people get in their practice for removing tiny screws from rusted out holes by using old credit cards as an impromptu and ineffective screwdriver? How, I ask you? Nurse, please move that snake. That's my nurse. Indentured nurseitude. I shot it before these two hit it with their car, and I followed them when they hauled it off. And how exactly were you able to follow them? Were you hunting from your car? Look, the sin is either convenient vehicle location or car hunting. Take your pick. I'm calling my lawyer. I hope for all our sakes you're as bad a surgeon as I am a hunter. <laughs> this episode is an all-timer and remembered mostly, rightfully so, for the Time Rift storyline. But it should also be noted this B story is equally hilarious and engaging. All right, everything resolved? Everybody nice and certain about their position in my world? Yes. I'm not sure I understand why Morty is so let down here. Just a couple episodes ago, he discovered that Mortys are a figurative shield for all Ricks. I'm not saying he should be happy that Rick looks down on him, but he shouldn't be surprised by it. This time, be like Grandpa. You mean drunk? This is going to cause the Ricks to go out of sync, and then both Ricks are going to take that as a sign that the other Rick is trying to kill him. But earlier, Morty said something different from the other Morty, and then he said, Wait, who said that? So, wouldn't they have heard the other Morty making a wisecrack about Rick? And wouldn't Rick know that it was the reason for the sink to go out of whack? Think about getting in the cupboards, but don't really! But Rick understands that all of the Ricks would be saying this, right? This show has made Rick really dumb over the last 30 seconds for the sake of moving the plot along. So for that, away we go! Beth pushes Jerry with bloody gloves, but there's no blood transfer to his clothing. And trust me, that stuff transfers. I mean, so I hear. I will reach into heaven and yank your screaming deer soul back! The deer survives this. Well, if all of me knocked out all the Ricks, and you peed in all of your pants, doesn't that mean that we're all synchronized? I mean, no? I haven't seen a timeline reverse butterfly effect this hard since the Redgren Grumphold episode of The X-Files. What are you doing? Calling myself. If leaving your other selves a voicemail was an option this entire time, isn't that a pretty easy immediate check before going full interdimensional shooting gallery? How long exactly do we have to wear these things? They're really embarrassing. Oh, I see Rick is an anti-masker. Can we talk about Rick's cord maintenance for a bit? He's got four plugs coming up from behind the work counter, and he chooses to plug three of them towards the top of the first strip, and one of them on the upper strip, and the one coming down from the ceiling plugs into the lower end of the top strip? What is this nonsense? You have a cord from below plugged in as your highest cord, you cord jumbling chaos monster. These men are from the Servine Institute of Elk, Moose, Deer, and Stag. They can take this deer to a helicopter and fly it to the country's top deer surgeon. Getting outsmarted by Jerry. 
You know what they do to third dimensional life forms in time prison? Same thing they do in every other prison, only forever. So three hots and a cot, medical care, tobacco-based currency. Oh, you're making a prison rape joke, aren't you? The last time we sent a prison rape joke, it was in Puss in Boots. So you might want to think about the company you keep, r and I'm really uncertain about everything. Are you though? Certainly, if the uncertainty is a concerted plan, you're actually certain of your uncertainty, which would in turn create certain certainty, right? Go. Come on, let's help grandpa. Yes, yeah, uh, I'm 100% not sure, not sure about anything. anything. Yeah. The war with grandpa. Now hand me that flathead screwdriver. Actually, Actually make it a Phillips. flathead. Oh, so the decision over which screwdriver Rick should use split off the timelines again? If something that minor would do it, then there should have already been hundreds of these after Rick was trying to figure out which Rick he needed to kill. There is no helicopter. And there is no Servine Institute. Clever ploy and all, but how did Jerry get all the emblems made so quickly to pull this off? And where did the uniforms the Cold Stone Creamery workers are wearing come from? So the cats float, but Morty falls? Is gravity itself also uncertain? Mom, Mom Dad! Dad! Well, I guess they can touch Jerry and Beth now without any consequences, but how would they know that? Rick didn't let them know how long they would have to wait when they unfroze everything. Are you going as motorcycles with green headlights instead of normal ones? I'm not sure which I want to send more. That Jerry would have this tight 15 ready to go right off the top of his head, or that Beth, who famously eye rolls just about everything Jerry does, would be laughing this hard at it. In fact, I'm so uncertain there's, there's now, now two, two sins. sins. Now, now, now four. Now, now, now eight. Now eight. Now eight. Now eight. Now we got some business to attend to a few late minutes south of here. Oh, you still use south in space? Whoa, Jesus, Jerry, what the hell are you doing here? You Being excellent at TV sins, for one thing. Also, I'm done with shows pretending like people have zero spatial awareness. Even if you don't have the hypervigilance gene where you're always checking your surroundings, one of your five senses is going to clue you into the fact that someone's sitting just outside your peripheral vision. And since we're talking Jerry, I'm gonna go with smell. You can park in a handicapped spot, Morty. Anything with less than eight limbs is considered disabled here. Of course, no one knows where to park because they apparently don't even mark the spaces. Also, not having some sort of hover vehicle parking is just inefficient planning. There should be roof parking with boxed areas for vertical takeoff vehicles that don't need all the extra space to drive around. The Furt Rock Design Committee sucks. Also, also, looks like you've got Gliz Cut over here and then Puiza Iza two doors down. And that's more poor strip mall planning to have two pizza places that close to each other? And honestly, it might be three, because I could be convinced a place called Dumpy Stump sells pizza as well. This works. Help me. Hey, what the I hell? I know, right? Even though we know there are multiple versions of all our characters, I'm counting at least 25 Jerry's in here. Is the show suggesting that a couple dozen Ricks need to ditch Jerry's at the same time when we know most Ricks aren't going to want Jerry around in the first place? And yes, I know the asteroid is cross-temporal, which is just Rick and Morty's for, we wanted to make a joke here, so maybe this will make it okay? You know what those guys do in, a, in, the, in their fancy boardrooms? They take their balls and they dip them in cocaine and wipe them all over each other? Rick is a liar. Eight balling is a myth and he should know that. Those pictures of me were clearly fakes. Including a period in your hashtag. Also, when your vocation is life extermination, I'm guessing you're gonna just go ahead and leave the geotracker feature off of the business card for exactly the reasons the show later confirms. Yeah, sure, I mean, if you spend all day shuffling words around, you can make anything sound bad. My theory for when I'm trying to force a sin on a show that probably isn't really a sin, but damn, the joke would be so funny and meta somehow makes it into this episode. Here, check this out. This whole full life simulation game is exactly the kind of thing that makes Rick and Morty such a pleasure. It treats the concept with enough respect to give it all the time it needs to be fully felt, while at the same time not letting the joke get stale. Take your sin off, Rick and Roy Parsons. I mean, Morty. Not a single member of this entire crowd is cheering during this spectacular play. Also, none of them have faces, and most are clearly copies of other people in the stands. They literally control seed these four in the front row and control veed them to the next row over. I'd get it if this were a cheaply animated TV show, but this is a high-tech game that simulates an entire life so convincingly that it becomes your reality. Hey, you sold a gun to a guy that kills people! Yelling this in a public place. Yeah, that's the difference between you and me, Morty. I never go back to the carpet store. All right, since Rick is taking a turn now, we have to talk more about this game because how can he have awareness of both the world around him and the living simulation if it's fully encompassing? Also, is this game only for humans? The character is human and that helmet wouldn't fit 90% of the other clients at this discount Dave and Buster's. There's no way that this would be profitable. And finally, if the game simulates a 55 year life, how is it also showing the player's decisions in real time on the screen? Wouldn't that mean it would take 55 actual years to play? 
Who wants to come watch Midnight Run yeah. with director's commentary on? Uh, Martin Brest has never recorded a commentary for Midnight Run. That's a sin for the show getting its facts wrong, a sin for the Collector's Edition Blu-ray for not making it happen, and a sin for the universe getting me all horned up for something that doesn't even exist in my world. Don't engage in breast play if you can't finish the job, damn it. K. Michael must either have precognition or the ability to see through solid objects, neither of which is mentioned or explained. So, sin. How is this big guy unaware that a hole was cut in the floor right beside him and his co-worker was taken out? Does peripheral vision not even exist for these creatures with 72.4% of their head being eyes? Oh man, w what have I done? Crashed into a heavily guarded fortress that apparently didn't have a single bit of exterior spacecraft deterrent, I guess. Portal transport that somehow knows exactly where to bisect this chesticle mantis threat for reasons. Ex machina. We can't get him out of here. He's gaseous. He's not going to make it through a portal, Morty. Oh, sure. Now the portal has rules. Open fire! Oh, I see my mistake now. I did some fake research, and apparently the company that makes the portal gun is literally titled Ex Machina Inc. It's like the whole purpose of this gun, apparently. Fair enough. I'll take back all the portal sins we've ever done. And by take back, I obviously mean double. Also, this room fills up with water, even though there's a giant hole in the wall where Morty drove the ship through a few minutes ago. Rick! Yeah, yeah. These guards apparently attended the Promethean Nebula School of just standing around and not shooting your guns even though you're about to die. Or, you know, if you still have that gun K. Michael dropped, we could finish the job and go home. You do understand I'm telepathic, right? Not sure why this matters since Rick is saying everything out loud and not with his mind. It's how things should be. It's how they could be. I could not agree more. This psychedelic Unity musical number that is like the Doctor Strange's open your eye scene but less about the astral projection and more about butts goes on for some time. We now interrupt this masturbatory reference to a different episode with some news position. News position. A TV crutch so useful even Rick and Morty can't help but do it. Sorry, Rick. The reward on your head is too high. Higher than access to a creature that sh**s gold? Seems like you could have dished out some Raisin Bran, gotten a few bars out of the deal, and let Rick and Morty be on their way. How are cogs that big fitting through mouth holes that small? Gear Troopers are apparently this world's version of Storm Troopers. Put these guys on a milk carton, cause they've been missing this whole time. I can't figure out where the main pot starts and where the jerry pots begin. But if those three coins in front of our jerry is all he has left, then he shouldn't fold. Even with ace high, these pot odds are way too good to not play. And I don't expect Jerry to know that, but I just can't let that kind of bad poker go unsinned. I'm now way more curious about how gear people sex works than I'm comfortable with. I've been grinding my gears trying to figure it out, so to speak. I'm gonna find some fuel and take a big fat Morty. That's my new word for because of today's events. Explaining your jokes, which is hilarious because we also do it, which also makes it meta. And honestly, the more we explain it, the more meta it gets. Get it? Telepathic being that Rube Goldberg, the destruction of an entire police force to escape, somehow didn't see this coming. Interesting. Somehow didn't see this coming is also the title of my- Why would all the Ricks and Mortys be picking up their Jerry's at the exact same time? And so help me if it's just so we can set up a hilarious taking home the wrong Jerry joke. I'm gonna laugh my ass off, but also still add the sin. Love! Connection. Connection. Experience. Excitement? Distress beacon! Oh yeah, baby! You're excited about that? I'm confused as to how, at this point, Morty is surprised by anything that Rick says or does. The first rule of space travel, kids, is always check out distress beacons. Oof. Rick is using an outdated space travel rule book. The most important rule of space travel is to wear your seatbelt. Seems like something terrible happened here. Really? Where'd you get that idea, Summer? Was it the ship in disarray? No signs of life? Or maybe the distress beacon that brought you here? Summer makes worse observations than Forrest Whitaker and Species. Oh yeah, if you find a room full of eggs, don't shy away from it. Give one of them a shake. So does this mean that xenomorphs exist in this universe? Which would also mean the regular space exploration is something that exists on Earth, and Rick shouldn't be getting away with as much as he does. Also, does no one find it weird that when they watch Ghostbusters or Gorillas in the Mist that the lead actress looks straight up like Ellen Ripley? Oh hey, you're alive! Thank God! False optimism. Then how do you know it didn't get on the ship with you? Those two ding-dongs seem pretty calm about the whole thing. Which poses the question, why did they wait till now to attack the rest of the crew? Even if Unity was hoping someone would show up from the distress signal they could also take over, that still doesn't explain why these two didn't attack after the beacon was transmitted. <laughs> why Screech and make the attack incredibly obvious? There's gotta be a better way for a brilliant entity to expertly and covertly convert everyone into, well, everyone. Whenever gross here must love to be saturated in water, but only in one tiny place on the whole lawn. I'm trying to find our weed whacker. Jerry's dumb. You know that. I know that. But I can't help but say that he's looking for a long lawn tool on a shelf where no one would ever store a weed whacker. 
Your father put a hatch in my garage. Which means now you have even more storage space under the garage and probably added 10 to $20,000 to the value of the house. Terry never sees the glass half full. He's toe up from the flow up. This is season two, and they still haven't managed to move this plug down here to one of the obvious three open ports. I hate you all. World peace achieved. Nice. A little weird to publish a paper about it for yourself. I think at this point we can agree that Rick would be the employee of the month at TV Sins. When we met, I was a young hive mind. People who talk to you while walking away. I suppose a peaceful utopia that needs a police force for something? Mount Rushmoreing this quickly. Show really puts the rush into Rushmore, huh? Well, this explains the $6,000 electric bill. Wait, what was the previous explanation? That sounds far more exciting than this Jerry Beth Bickering B story. Wake up, people! You have to fight it! You're under the spell of an evil monster! I can hear you. Every four years in the United States of America. Wake up! You have to have some individuality left in there! Pep talks around the writing table during CinemaSin staff meetings. This woman was a drug addict on the verge of suicide. Now she's a marine biologist. Which isn't impressive when you consider that everyone on the planet is also a marine biologist, thanks to the hive mind. I have transformed life here into a paradise. Prostitutes are now scientists. Insinuating that sex workers cannot also be scientists in a perfect world. <laughs> are they all the same organism? Is the mind telling them to puke? Unity can read their minds, improve them with education, link everyone together, and relieve her drug binge through individuals? How does this even work? I can let go. Can you also teleport people? Because in exactly four seconds, the city is destroyed and all the people are somehow way over here. Hey! Rick can hear this from far away, inside a building, and with loud techno music playing. And I'll be damned if that ripple nipple bitch's race is superior! Those are some very impressive conical nipples attached to that asshole. Nipples that were clearly not present beneath that shirt just a moment ago. Hey! These two freaks have no race! Speaking of freaks, what's going on with this crowd of totally still people back here? Are they unity controlled, just standing by, all hands on hips angry looking? Are they rioters, frozen in terror? Or is this lazy animation? You want to go upstairs and cut carrots and watch a Lifetime original above a f***ing alien dungeon? Surprisingly, Mommy May I Please Have an Alien Dungeon proved to be a very uplifting piece of filmmaking, especially for a Lifetime movie. I once saw him briefly forget the word for humans. This sets up a joke later in the episode, but it's really not that big of a deal to forget a word every now and again. Our minds calculate thousands of decisions a day, so what if we forget a word? Like right now, I'm having trouble remembering the word for that thing that's like soft, but then it gets hard. You know, you put it in holes and cracks. Ugh. It's really good in places that are wet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cock. You and Unity are like, like leggings and mid-calf boots. You think you're great together, but you're just bringing out the worst in each other. That's fashionist. If Blim Blam could rip the chains off this whole time, then why was he still locked up? I'd laugh, but I'm biologically incapable. But somehow capable of communicating clear words and dynamically expressive versions of <laughs> Just not able to ha ha. Is there a slow setting? Best door ever. Sarcastic aliens not named Alf. Unity community. Rick, forgive me for doing this in notes. Breaking up with someone through a letter. Also, reading. No more alien prisoners. But aliens suspended in some sort of liquid chamber are okay? Is anyone going to address these? Lay it, lay it down. Let me see your hand. Emotionally relevant songs sincerely plays at the end of a Rick and Morty episode while also making fun of emotionally relevant songs that play at the end of TV shows. Cliché. I wanted to thank you for letting me live here all this time, so I'm treating the family to a vacation! Pro tip, a vacation is not a treat if it's thrown on you at the last minute. People have to take off work or school or find pet sitters. Last minute vacations are f***ing anxiety-filled balls of stress. There is nothing fun about them. Well, I don't like your unemployed jeans and my grandchildren, Jerry, but life is made of little concessions. <laughs> I guess this is the uh, TV sins takes off a sin from Rick and Morty because it's hilarious cliche. Wall has alien parasite head spatter. Wall has no alien parasite head spatter. There's no such thing as an Uncle Steve. That is an alien parasite. And even though everyone else will immediately turn back into the parasite when shot, Uncle Steve decided to wait a few seconds for dramatic effect. How thoughtful. I get they need to address this problem, but I don't understand why Rick had to throw the parasite on the table. That's perfectly good breakfast casserole you just ruined. Why would you do that, Rick? Why? Get off the high road, Summer. We all got pink eye because you won't stop texting on the toilet. Joe insinuates that there is a single human being on the planet who doesn't use their phone while busting grumpies. The pink eye is worth it and we all know it. 
So it's actually Rick that needs to get off his high horse, or high road, or whatever high he's on. In this opening credits cutscene, Mr. Booby Butthole holds his nose while jumping into the portal. But we all remember when this originally happened, PB had experienced portals many times before and would know this was unnecessary. Look, I've been a fan of the pupes beehole since season 1 episode 1. I know these things. Having a slumber party style pillow fight in your day clothes. Maybe you got the first one in time, Rick! Can't afford to chance it. But Rick apparently could afford to wait until now to barricade the house instead of as soon as he realized these things had potentially infested the house. Also, considering how many we find out there are, what are the chances none of them had already ventured out of the house? I'm guessing slim to poopy butthole. Just pee your pants. I did it the minute we got stuck. Then are you wearing a diaper, Summer? Because those pants are as white as Christmas, and I see no sign of pee. Not that I want to, but I've got a job to do here, people. It's me, Cousin Nicky. I'm walking here. I mean, I'm not. I'm crouching the elevator shaft, but hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> Still a better Dustin Hoffman impression than the one in Sphere. Also, deus ex Nikina. Nikki was the reason we found that old Nazi submarine. Did that not even happen? You know, this episode is really just a clever excuse to do more interdimensional cable-type cutaways, which is strange because they would do a literal sequel to that episode just four episodes after this one. I guess what I'm saying is it's pretty obvious that this episode is just another excuse to make up wild scenarios with no canonical consequence. And as someone who needs canonical consequence to do their job correctly, I find this annoying. And Deus Ex Beauregardna? Is Ex Machina-ing a requirement of adding new memories? Oh, no! Don't flash back! Thing I say watching This Is Us, or Arrow, or The Walking Dead, or pretty much every single show on television somehow makes its way into the script. Marmalade is served. Yeah. And apparently self-replenishing as well, considering he just poured out half of that jar on Jerry and now it's almost full again. Look! There's only supposed to be six- This number gimmick is fun and all, but I have some questions. If they can multiply this quickly, why didn't Uncle Steve already have several new friends at the start before Rick got there? How are subsequent parasites able to control everyone's mind, but Uncle Steve couldn't control Rick's? And finally, a raptor? Can the parasite specifically change the part of the memory that knows that even though raptor photographers are a thing, they shoot solely on digital? I'm having a blast here for sure, but I'm also having a hard time grasping how any of this works. Here, Rick, use me! Oh, thanks, Pencil Vester! Let's just think about a sentient pencil who also functions as a working pencil for a second because it's f***ing terrifying! What happens when the lead starts diminishing? What happens when it has to be sharpened? That's it! <laughs> Photos! Hard evidence! And that should be the end of it. This show will quickly shift from this with some sleight of hand, but all they have to do is pull out an old photo album or some family vacation videos and this thing is over! I will admit it's suspicious that Summer's only friend is a magic ballerina lamb that we've never seen. I find it suspicious that creature that self-identifies as Frankenstein used the term only friend when Summer just said her phone was filled with pictures of her friends from school. Nipple X's. Rick, that is my daughter. Says the guy who just stated that except for Beth and Jerry, all bets are off. Shut up, Hammer Eye. Shut up, Amish Cyborg. What is this, 90s Conan? <laughs> Rick, as per usual, would be the GOAT at TV Sins. This living room has never been this big. Also, I'm pretty sure there are at least seven that's racist in here, so I'll throw those in as well. Also, also, I'm guessing every last one of these characters has its own fan wiki page. And what I'm saying is we should all find better ways to spend our time. Fandom ruins us all. No! I'm really curious about the multiplying process of this species. It appears they can just appear immediately once they're transposed into a memory. But how do they appear in the memory in the first place? Doesn't appear they need another parasite's memory to do that because once Steve was killed, the next parasite, Cousin Nikki, appeared in Mr. Poopy Butthole's memory. And we eventually find out Mr. Poopy Butthole is a real person. So if they don't need another parasite's memory, then why wouldn't they all just appear immediately? This is the equivalent of the ghost that can kill you right away, instead choosing to show you how it has the ability to move chairs around and sh We'll be right back after these messages. I don't hate a lot about Rick and Morty, but the blatant fourth wall breaks make me angry. Probably because when you destroy that wall so casually and so completely, you destroy a show's ability for any part of the narrative to even matter. Ever. And I like things that occasionally matter. And we can play Nintendo games. Nintendo, give me free stuff. I'm guessing they just did, since that Nintendo DS was not in your hand. You'd set them all down in the kitchen so you could grab the cash to go buy more. What is going on with Morty in this picture? It looks like Mr. Bill's ugly cousin. I get that the animators probably don't pay as much attention to the background, but you've animated this character many times over, and everyone else looks like themselves in the pictures. Sleepy Gary even got a cool hat in his. Leaving your pants unbuttoned. Maybe we'll see Chewbacca. <sighs> what are we doing? I'm guessing not getting to see Chewbacca. Sleepy Gary is such a tease. Grass tastes bad. Grass actually has a pretty neutral taste compared to the bitterness of most plants. So how would you use this washing machine to actually wash clothes? 
Obviously, this memory is fake because do you know of a single amusement park that would have this much space between roller coasters and not use it for souvenir shops, carnival cheat games, or overpriced burger shops? What? Oh! Was that bottle recently painted purple and the paint hasn't dried? Because black eyes like that take at least a few minutes to develop. Morty, give a gun to the lady that got pregnant with me too early and constantly makes it our problem. This message about how our flaws are the things that make us human and connect us is actually really smart and sweet. And I'd like to take a sin off for Rick and Morty actually having some depth and meaning, but the show casually broke the fourth wall earlier, so my hands are tied. My wife shot a longtime family friend. Funny? Yeah. Mr. Poopy Butthole being an actual being and longtime friend make any sense whatsoever? No. And you know how we feel about things that prioritize a laugh over the sanctity of complete logical consistency. That's right. We're the only ones that get to do it. And that's the way the sins goes. Show opens up on Earth getting head. Hey, golf is easy now. And yeah, despite the surrounding explosions and cataclysm, still unspeakably boring. Wearing sunglasses indoors. Also, why does Rick put his sunglasses on in the living room only to take them off before he and Morty have even made it outside? A place where the sunglasses may actually be needed? With this show, I could totally buy that they took a detour via some faraway planet with 42 suns on their way from the living room to the garage, but if that's the case, why didn't Rick give Morty a pair as well? It's not God, Summer. She's allowed to think it's God if she wants, honey. Mixing parenting and politics. I mean, religion. I mean, religion and politics. I mean, this is how you get ants, Summer. Hi, I'm Morty's math teacher. I'm also part of the street team inviting folks to the church downtown so we can pray together. How long ago did Mr. Potato Head in Space turn up? Have they really had time to organize a street team dedicated to inviting people to church? If so, where are your priorities, people? If you can mobilize this quickly, why not help the probable millions that have been displaced by aforementioned natural disasters? Also, why is the math teacher not questioning the fact that Rick and Morty just flew away in a f***ing spaceship right in front of him? How is praying going to help? Beth would be swifty at TV Sins. SETI, NORAD, and every broadcaster on the planet are attempting to show this being what humanity's got. String theory, world history, the human genome. Have you tried sending in launch codes? What? That's a terrible idea. Is General Warmonger suggesting they send nuclear launch codes to an obviously superior alien being with clearly questionable intent? Now, I'm sure his actual meaning here was to fire the missiles, but that is not what he said, people. Mr. President, what America's got is 70,000 megatons of kaboom boom. I wanted to send the fact that 70,000 megatons must be a colossal over-exaggeration of how many nuclear weapons America has. After a small amount of Googling, it turns out that is the generally accepted estimate of the size of our nuclear arsenal. And that is a sin. No. Now the sunglasses are back? So why did they take Rick's spaceship in the first place? Why not just portal gun their way in like they were clearly going to do in the first draft of this script? Also, this begs the question, why does Rick have a spaceship at all? Surely it's easier, safer, and quicker to just portal gun everywhere. Stay back! This watch turns people into snakes! We will find out later, Rick has actually murdered these people and the snakes are being released from a contraption to sell the illusion. And he is not punished for it then or now. So the sin, as always, is kids. I mean, murder. I mean, f*** it. Give me a ding. Pharrell, Newman, Corgan, and that dream guy, they're all dead. The Grammy, sir. There was an earthquake and all the musicians, all the famous ones, they're gone. When was the last time Randy f Newman was at the Grammys? Or Billy Corgan, for that matter. Get this man and his grandson on a Black Hawk to Area 51. Or, and this could be a terrible inconvenience for everyone, I understand, use the portal? You double down and always hit on a soft 16. I think hitting on soft 16s has landed the church in plenty enough hot water as it is, thank you very much. In case you confused it with Nevada Desert, the setting of that awful Dave Bautista zombie movie. Yes, I'm going to send Army of the Dead at every and any opportunity, regardless of the size of the shoehorn required. Get swifty. What the hell is that? It's our world's best effort, that's what. How can that possibly be true? Okay, every artist at the Grammys was killed, but there are plenty of great artists that have never been nominated for a Grammy. What about the Kinks, the Strokes, the Spice Girls, and the Talking Heads? The planet's about to be destroyed by a literal talking head. Your saviors are right there. I like what you got. Good job. This song works? Mr. President, you're gonna want to see this. You'd better come take a look at this cliche. Sir, he started picking up on a garbled signal. We're decrypting it now. Decrypting it? Based on what? If Rick wasn't here, you wouldn't even know what these aliens were called, let alone their language. 24 hours, five planets, five songs. But in the end, there can only be one planet music. Trashy reality TV set in space? This show sounds incredible. I can't wait to binge all 988 seasons. Ha. <sighs> Uh, it's probably a bad time to mention it, but any astronauts you guys had in orbit are definitely dead. Everyone on Earth, except orbiting astronauts, survives this. 
earlier, all Morty had to do was press a key and the keyboard automatically played a funky beat. Wouldn't his time be better spent cycling through the pre-programmed beats instead of trying to accidentally himself into a tune? Also, while we're on the topic of the keyboard, shouldn't they find the person that programmed the keyboard with the winning beat? I'm fairly certain they weren't invited to the Grammys. You can put your faith in nukes if we get through this, General. Until then, I'll put mine in Rick and Morty. Usually, I would also be in favor of anything other than the nuclear option. But after having sent a good few of these episodes, the phrase, I put my faith in Rick and Morty, makes me lean towards the big red button as a safer option, with the opportunity for far less damaging fallout. We should pack up and leave town now. And go, where? Is it not clear by the floating heads in the sky that there's nowhere to just pack up and head to? We hereby send these unwantables skyward that they might be inhaled by the many heads. This is an entirely inefficient method of dealing with your unwantables. Do you know how many helium balloons it takes to lift your average person? The internet does. It would take approximately 65,000 liters of helium or 60,000 liters of hydrogen to lift your average sized human. That's over 5,000 regular sized balloons. Also, you'd probably need to double that if you wanted to get any sort of altitude for smiting. Movie talker? Hey, wait. No, that's probably fair. Please help me. You can reach me if you try. Please help me! Inappropriate joke teller? Okay, now I just feel attacked. Morty. Bird person? Morty lands on a planet of bird people and just happens to be greeted by the one bird person he knows. What the f***? You can turn into ice? My story begins at the dawn of time in the faraway realm of Alpha Betrium. 23 minute TV show has time for this amount of ice position. Okay, things are getting out of hand. Getting? Giant Head from Space has created cataclysmic natural disasters around the world. The planet has been teleported to who the fork knows where to participate in some sort of intergalactic singing contest with an 80% mortality rate and all of your best musicians are already dead. I repeat, getting out of hand? I'm setting the nuclear option to launch one minute into Earth's performance. And you, Mr. President, I hope you like being hit in the face with a gun. Wait, 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 why, why? why? <laughs> doesn't the general need the president to be conscious so that he can authorize said nuclear option? If he doesn't need the president's codes or authorization, why hasn't he launched them already? I believe I can access the history of Rick's gun and help you get back to him. Snooping through the browser history of someone else's electronic device. Not that you'd find anything in mine. Nope, no sir, not mine. Clean as a whistle. Hey, did you guys, did you guys see that one thing on the, did you see at the place, the one thing? Can we, can we move on now? One sin for the mental image resulting from reading the band name Flesh Curtains. I married you because you're the love of my life. Going to need a whole lot of balloons full of an intergalactic skip. Just launch the missiles. Maybe all it takes to launch nuclear missiles is one guy at a computer pressing a button, but if that's true, I don't want to know about it, and it's no less of a sin. After 988 seasons of planet music, the Cromulons have decided to declare Earth the final winner and bring our musical reality show to a conclusion. Goodbye. Oh man, now what am I gonna watch? Ooh, maybe there's a UK version. Trade secret, Mr. President. Particle beam and a wristwatch. Snake holster on the leg. But how does he refill the snakes while he's out and about? <laughs> 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 Laughing at murder. Jeez, I can't believe we found a version of Earth with a Ball Fondler's movie franchise! Even this early in the series, I find it impossible to believe that Morty could be surprised by much of anything they find, considering all the insane adventures they've been on to this point. Also, they choose Ball Fondlers over French toast. I can't speak to either movie's quality, but I can attest to the fact that ball fondling is so much better after a helping of French toast. Or, so I've heard. Allowing Full House to exist in more than one reality. What's wrong, Rick? Is it the quantum carburetor or something? Jesus, Morty, you can't just add a <coughs> sci-fi word to a car word and hope it means something. Over 800 episodes of Star Trek would beg to differ. Wait! You can't leave me here! To be fair, he can. But I'm not sure why he does. If Rick can bring Morty with him into the battery, I'm not sure why he couldn't bring Summer as well. In fact, Rick knows that Summer would be less of a buzzkill, so if anything, why isn't he leaving Morty in the car? If Rick and the gang are in a different reality, who is Summer texting? Did we miss them getting an interdimensional cell phone plan added onto their interdimensional cable package? Either way, we're looking at one sin for the show, or one for f***ing cable companies always trying to upsell you on sh**. I know that the joke throughout this episode is that the ship follows Rick's instructions to the extreme, but why would Rick program it to start with murder as its first line of defense? Rick's an imaginative guy. What about electrifying the door or, I don't know, having the ship move itself away from the danger? 
Where are we, Rick? Morty, remember eight seconds ago when, <clears throat> when you said, go inside what? And I said the battery, and then we showed up here, and I wasn't like, whoa, this is unexpected. This is not what I was expecting, Morty. As is always the case, Rick would be excellent at TV sins. I put a spatially tessellated void inside a modified temporal field until a planet developed intelligent life. By this point, I know the quest for any semblance of meaning or logic behind the science in Rick and Morty is a fruitlessly frustrating one. So, to that end, I'm gonna save my sanity and time and leave this with a very simple and succinct, how the f*** can this possibly work? You have a whole planet sitting around making your power for you? That's slavery! It's society! Confusing the inherent flaws that come with any modern society with the actual f***ing aberration that is slavery. It appears we are being revisited by the alien known as Rick, who once gave our world the gift of Googlebox technology. Sinful news position is sinful and all that, but how is this news story already being broadcasted? Rick just got there, and they haven't actually seen him in person. How do they know someone else isn't flying the discount board cube? Also, why does the newscaster have to explain what Googlebox technology is? The civilization is literally built to use this technology. Who there wouldn't know what a Googlebox is? Do they need to have one of these hooked up to every household appliance? And does that mean that the appliance only works while the stomping is in progress? Why don't they have a way of storing the energy they generate? Where the f*** do these cables go and why are they a different color? Why is Flubogorx? Morty, you gotta flip them off. I told them it means peace among worlds. How hilarious is that? As hilarious as this prank is, what's the point? It doesn't mean sh to these aliens because they have no context for the gesture's original meaning. And it's not like anyone is going to come visit the universe held inside Rick's ship battery just to appreciate this flipping off of an entire civilization consequence free. Sh I bet there are plenty of assholes that would pay good money to do that, including me. Either way, someone deserves a sin. I would love to see it. F*** you. No. What did you say to me? F*** you. You told me it means much obliged. How is much obliged a suitable response to Rick wanting to see this genius invention? Shouldn't he have said something like, happy to oblige? Unless much obliged actually means happy to oblige to these people, in which case, f*** you. Would it be possible for us to get some kind of tour of your mini-verse from the inside? Why bother with a tour? Just destroy the damn thing and make up some BS about why they're forbidden to create this technology again. He is a literal god to them. This isn't a f***ing chocolate factory. I don't have time. This comment doesn't necessarily mean that the Wonkaverse exists in this entirely unique and self-contained universe, but it does mean that chocolate exists. And as comforting as it is to discover that chocolate appears to be a multiversal constant, it really doesn't make a damn bit of sense. So, yes. I'm sending chocolate. All right, let's go. How did Zerp Flirterberg know that Rick would know to hold on to him and Morty for this to work? And how f***ing quick are Rick's reactions? There was zero warning for this sudden transportation. What are you doing telling this guy that his mini-verse is unethical? D do you not see the hypocrisy here? The only thing I see is an implausible belief on Morty's behalf that Rick isn't this disingenuous and awful as a human being. Hypocrisy indeed. Looked in a mirror lately, Morty? Incoming! We got a device! Bum! Bum! Yet, no one moves back. Crank it! I told them this means peace among worlds. <laughs> but the gesture Zlipslop is making actually is the sign for peace, in our universe at least. So does that mean this two-finger gesture independently evolved to have the opposite meaning in this microverse culture, thus allowing him to comically assign it the inverse meaning in this miniverse, which has actually meant its reversion back to the original meaning as we know in our universe? Are they not really aliens? No, they're just a couple of crazy, wacky scientists, you know? <laughs> I hate to be the well-actually guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who am I kidding? Of course I don't. Anyways, from this perspective, they're all the very definition of aliens. Pterodactyl! Asshole! The only reason this exclamation should have scared Zlap Vanderflange is if he's aware of what a pterodactyl is, which means this place also evolved dinosaurs? This would be a bizarre mathematical impossibility even if it were just another planet. This is another planet in an entirely different universe. I guess the multiverse must really love dinosaurs. Honestly, can't blame them. Don't flatter yourself. There's always AAA, you f***ing cocks. I've heard the quantum battery add-on to the AAA plan is priced very reasonably. What are we going to do now? Question from the writer's room when struggling with this very weak B story somehow make their way into the episode. We are now three layers of distinct universe deep, and the most variety this evolutionary gene pool could muster is a third eye on a deer. This is still a f***ing deer. I don't know whether to send the fact that this deer would have definitely heard this timber-based Jaeger situation coming from a mile away and would have long since bolted, or the fact that this asshole tries to lunge for it instead of using this f***ing boulder launcher to kill it. 
Both it is. I hope your god is as big a dick as you. My god's the biggest dick that's never existed. Blasphemy. Rick has form for using snakes in this way, so I'm prepared to reluctantly buy this element of his armory. However, the cream of this carefully crafted pie of bullshittery is that with this limited amount of storage space, Zulu Von Stick here chose to keep a f***ing eagle just in case of this very eventuality. And it f***ing worked. Ooh, wow, gay! That is pretty gay. Using the word gay as an insult. I masturbated to an extra curvy piece of driftwood the other day! Xylophiles. Oh, hey, guys! I just finished cooking us a feast! The f*** is there a kitchen in this lab for? Also, who would want to live in a universe where one pan of beige constitutes a feast? Ah! Genocide. A long time ago, I implanted you with a subdermal chip that could call upon dormant nanobots in your bloodstream to restructure your anatomy and turn you into a car. Turning your grandson into a turbo teen without explicit consent? <laughs> Rick's eyes survive this. Um, guys, what happens if the hood is locked? Ew, what the hell? Jesus, there's flies in my ice cream! Fly cream. Nice to see everyone's just sitting here patiently with their two eggs, two sausages, pancake, and I'm gonna say rice? Grits? Cottage cheese? My point is, why is no one eating yet? Rick and Morty episode f***s up standard breakfast operating procedure cliche. This time it's the case of the inappropriate bowl of cereal. Everyone knows that you eat cereal while the main breakfast is cooking. And if that shit has been sitting there in a puddle of milk getting soggier by the second, I will lose my damn mind. And don't think it gets a pass if this morning malady is at the pre-milked part of its journey. This bowl is filled to capacity with cereal. How does Morty expect to be able to add any milk to this without some serious cereal seepage? What is up with this balloon game that Jerry's playing? First I thought he was popping just the blue balloons, but then he pops a red one, and then I wondered why there's no score listed, so what's the point? But then I realized there are apps where you just pop fake bubble wrap like this, so now the sin's for app culture and bleeding my bank account dry 99 cents at a time. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. To a conversation about vampires? In fairness to Jerry, vampires are one of the least interesting conversation topics to happen around this breakfast table. So, not sure why everyone's so worked up about it. Also, making me use the phrase, in fairness to Jerry. We tried a couple's therapist. That's earth therapy. You might as well ask a horse to fix a merry-go-round. It may not be perfect and may take a lot of work, but strangely enough, earth therapy is the only therapy most people on earth have access to. And if I have to throw sin on one of the funniest shows of all time, just to remind you that therapy is indeed amazing, ding away. Also, does he mean an actual horse or one of the horses on the merry-go-round itself? I suppose one is as ridiculous as the other, but both prove the point he's trying to make. But this is an oddly specific example of futility, and sometimes I just want to know where this sh comes from. I'm gonna go make some wooden steaks. Good luck, Summer. If there's one thing I know about Rick and Morty, it's they don't really specialize in having steaks. I booked you for a two-day intensive at Nuptia 4, the galaxy's most successful couples counseling institute. This place has a 100% success rate at fixing marriages and is open to the entire galaxy. But somehow Rick was able to book them in with zero notice. I can't even book a damn haircut with that sort of notice. My shoe fits up your ass. You wish. <laughs> Take that back. You do not think that about me. Show doesn't clearly explain that she's not really angry about the whole killer insect thing. It was actually the four boobs. Who wants to carry around two more of those nuisances? Oh. <gasps> Character closes a door and is scared by a younger asshole clone of their grandfather standing behind it. Cliché. Oh my god, Toby Matthews! Boy Crazy Summer is my least favorite summer, but strangely enough, also my most favorite summer. The next step is to watch your mythologues interact together. And uh, big surprise, it's never pretty. Is a battle between the physical manifestations of your deepest and most uncensored thoughts about your significant other really the sort of thing that should be aired in front of complete strangers? In what way is that therapeutic for anybody? We can work together. Smearing your arm oil on your worm husband. Honestly, guys, have you ever tried to sit in this show? Modesty hands. And I guess it's time for me to get back inside the old timer. I'll let one of our honorary TV Sins team members take this one. Um, phrasing? Where are the Smith mythologues? Sending someone in to check instead of just watching back the surveillance footage. You do have surveillance footage in your fancy futuristic marriage monster prisons, right? Also, this works. Seriously, was the wall matching color of this giant f***ing gloop ball really enough to hide it? I mean, it's clearly spilling over these steps. What the heck did Glick Glack Foo Feem think this thing was? Is anybody listening? Can anyone understand? Stop looking at me like that and actually help me. Rhyming understand with help me. 
Surely race this advanced has the ability to present these murderous marital monstrosities as harmless holograms. They'd still be able to observe how they interact without the risk of all this maiming. Then again, I suppose that'd mean this B-plot would actually end up being about the complexities of dealing with long-term relationships. And then we'd be in danger of actually learning something. F*** that noise. Continue the smashing and slicing. Also, if they absolutely have to take a physical form, which they don't, why would they send this guy all on his own and leave the door wide f***ing open if you know that this is the sort of havoc and destruction they could cause? And this place has a 100% success rate? My TripAdvisor review shall say otherwise. What the hell kind of relationship do you have? I mean, you just screamed. They're codependent! So, are you being rhetorical here? Has your universally lauded marriage counseling service never dealt with codependency? Earlier, these creatures called our planet Earth, as if they didn't know how to pronounce Earth. But the entire map is in English. Make up your mind, ridiculous animated comedy show. If you can find one too, we should be safe for hours, maybe days. There is so much room in this panel for both of them that even Jack and Rose are scoffing at Jerry right now. Get out, Sam. Read a book. Reading. Tiny, Tiny Rick. Rick. This episode says Tiny Rick more than the Pickle Rick episode says Pickle Rick. I feel like the writers may be overcompensating for something here. Hmm. Tiny. Pickle. Give me a second, I'm gonna figure it out. Why was Knight Rider called Knight Rider? The car's name was Kit, nobody rode Michael Knight. Rick would be excellent at a Knight Rider episode of TV Sins. Why was Knight Rider called Knight Rider? The car's name was Kit, nobody rode Michael Knight. See? Get your shit together, get it all together, and put it in a backpack, all your sh This gets its shit together for some sh <laughs> No, nobody's doing that. Around 41% of people are doing that. You want Jerry? I don't even want Jerry. That's Jerryist. Stacking your cups this high is just asking for some asshole kid to accidentally knock them over as a distraction to put some special ingredient in the punch bowl. Shorter cup stacks are the road to true sobriety, friends. Let me out! Let me out! This is not a dance! This sin goes out to the Rick and Morty fan who rocked this dance at his local club, thinking everyone would think it was hilarious, forgetting that Rick and Morty Uber fans are a much smaller subset of humanity than you might think and was mocked and embarrassed and could never show his face again at Alan's anticipation station, and it's me. This sin goes out to me. You're a great student. The fact that you're an 80-year-old man in a clone body it never bothered me. But it really should. Why is everyone even aware of this, let alone okay with it? And how has Rick managed to prove himself as a great student? He's only been there since this morning, and I don't think he's even been to any classes. And if he has, f***ing why? He's meant to be hunting f***ing vampires. How can one sentence contain so much sin? Summer Smith is a f***ing psycho nerd, and she just got me kicked out of school! Not owning your s***. I'm here to save you, or my name isn't Jerry Smith! Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! Jerry Smith! <laughs> yeah, no show has a right to be this funny and genuinely insightful at the same time. It's just not fair to the other shows. And yes, that means I'm giving this show a sin because other shows can't match it. But don't look at me that way. You knew which channel you clicked on, honey. I like to believe that Hugh Jackman's character from The Prestige survived, found some youth juice, and eventually became his character in Reminiscence, and that this machine is the twisted result of a merger of both of his infamous inventions. I have nothing to base this on, but now that I've shared this with you, don't act like you don't want it to be true as well. Unless this clock is broken, and there's no reason to assume it is, the school dance was taking place at 2 in the afternoon when they should all, no, oh, I don't know, be in classes. Also, this calendar has, at most, 20 squares in total. Of course, this all could be taking place in an alternate reality where the months only have 20 days and school dances regularly take place at 2 p.m., but I'm not prepared to believe in a universe where such madness is possible. Now, back to the 80-year-old in the clone body of his teenage self attempting to murder his original older self. What are you gonna do? I'm Tiny Rick. I'm the coolest kid in your school. You have been expelled, sir. Your threats are hollow. Rick comes out of the vat and Marty says Rick, while Summer says pants. And while I don't blame Summer for her cultural norm views on nude body boundaries regarding grandparents, I will say it's weird that you chose this moment to be all of a sudden so grossed out when his tiny Rick has been in clear view the whole episode. Why go through all of the effort of strategically covering the Rick if you're just going to blur it anyway now? Is there a set budget of blurs per episode? Mass Sanchezide. Just so you're prepared, there's a bunch of dead me's in the garage. Speaking of multiple me's, what the f***? is going to happen to the assorted cast of Into the Jerryverse back here. I know nobody behind Rick and Morty is interested in answering those sort of questions, but damn it, I want my loose ends tied up. Hey, phrasing! Don't worry about Jerry. Jesus, that door opened hella fast. How many broken noses have these doors caused? And how many people have been sent to the hospital while in this hospital? It'll stain if it gets on your clothes, and it'll send you into a murderous rage if it gets in your eyes or mouth. Seems like this hospital would be doing everything it could to make sure Jerry couldn't projectile vomit that stuff on anybody. Or, at the very least, make sure anyone nearby was protected from him. Hello, I'm Dr. Glipglop. If Jerry is affected by the same mutant bacteria, why didn't he get sent into a murderous rage? And maybe Rick did something to Jerry where he didn't have to kill him, but why didn't he do the same? 
for the Doctor. Is it because hilarity? What are you doing? A sequel. I don't understand. Yeah, me neither. We pretty much nailed it the first time. Acknowledging your premise is likely not going to be very good, so you can lower people's expectations and people can forget about the usual high quality of your work cliche. Ow! That L is fully up in there, and I hope for her sake these wooden letters have been sandpapered smooth. Splinters in your sensitive bits can ruin a good wood in the ass moment, you know? Also, you're calling this one Interdimensional Cable 2, even though the first one was called Ricksty Minutes. You got some Rambo 3 in my Rick and Morty guys. Not cool. Man versus car. So every single one of these shows will be random and stupid in the hope of generating roughly the same number of laughs as the last time they did this, but they went with randomer and stupider for this one. I hope that when you told your friends about Rick and Morty, this wasn't the first episode you showed them. I'm looking through your eye holes. Yes, look through my eye holes. My boner is confused. Also, we're about to find out that these eye holes are a breakfast cereal. Who the puts their cereal on their faces and has weird foreplay like this? Or is this the species where eye holes come from? This is an improvisational pretzel you're guiding me through. <laughs> is that rope made of metal or is the skylight glass really thin? How the f did that break the glass? I'm the only one that's allowed to have eye holes. Right after this, Rick will say that this guy actually beats you up if you possess eye holes. So I have a lot of questions. First, if the company making eye holes is advertising this, why would they hire this guy as their mascot? You know, the one who beats the out of you for eating them. Second, how does the eye hole man know that you have eye holes? I mean, this guy came in a helicopter, which had to have been in flight before this couple even revealed their eye holes. Third, and more importantly, you can buy these at Ikea? And why does this place have stores Earth has? Is it a comment on their ubiquity? Shrimply Pibble's life can be saved if we replace his heart with your human penis. After the scenario was revealed, a writer for House woke up in a cold sweat and yelled, why didn't we think of that? Their entire culture is built around their penises. Man, I don't know how they got Werner Herzog for this episode and to say this shit, but I'll remove a sin just because listening to him talk matter-of-factly about jokes is fing hilarious. But also, while I'm listening to something hilarious, look at those fly wings. How are they on the outside of the lab jacket? And tell Shrimply Pibbles that when the galaxy came calling, Jerry Smith from Earth didn't flinch. He's right there, Jer. Pretty sure he just told him. Beth and Summer are cruising their smartphones from an intergalactic hospital, and I'm wondering how any of that works. Does the alien hospital have Wi-Fi that connects to different planet technology? Are there satellites that transmit all the way back to Earth while Summer texts? How did I get here? It's that lady with the sh on her face like Worf from Star Trek that, that was getting coffee. How did she get there? It is. It's the same woman. Infinite channels, infinite possibilities. But sure, why not have something happen to her on TV immediately after Morty noticed her? We need one Jan Michael Vincent to Quadrant C. We need two Jan Michael Vincents to Quadrant E. Seems the main problem this world is having is that there are only eight Jan Michael Vincents and 16 Quadrants. The Jan Michael Vincent factory wouldn't send two Jan Michael Vincents to one Quadrant. I'm clearly sending a fake movie and not Rick and Morty here, but where else am I going to put this in? This show where somebody steals stuff must be a sham because that camera didn't follow Steely through the door. It panned over through this huge opening on the left side of this guy's office. So either this is a studio or Steely went through an unnecessary door. All right, okay, now we're in the quiet safe room where none of the people whose stuff I stole can get to us. Yeah, but you literally stole a person you stole from. So where did you put that guy? Is he tied up somewhere in your house? What was the point of stealing him? We got a bag of bobbish. That's eight. Rapples. First off, you literally stole items that people from Earth would recognize from a place with nothing alien to us whatsoever. How do you suddenly have alien items sold for alien prices? Secondly, I'm looking at your safe room and you have nothing alien at all on your shelves. This whole scene seems to be setting up the plumbus sketch for later. Get the orthodontist oh, out of here. No, why? Take him out of this audience. Kill him. Sick him. Demons. Suck his life out. This is so casually insane, I've got to remove a Sid. Why does the doctor have a framed picture of the anatomy of a human penis? Does the image change based on whatever he's researching, or is he just obsessed with all things I don't want to be that girl, but maybe there would be less conflict if they didn't shoot their shows at the same time. Oh, Summer, you have no idea how much money that must save production. Would it, though? Two shows being shot side by side with conflicting lighting and audio seems like an absolute nightmare waste of resources. We get a one personal space, two. Personal space. This guy has four slides that simply say personal space. The other five slides, at the very least, say what you're supposed to do with his personal space, which is to stay away from it. I know this might be the point, but I find it hard to believe any dimension finds this entertaining. Also, this alien in the background is loving this countdown of personal space slides, and their enthusiasm is infectious. But it took them seven slides to start getting into it, which I'm guessing is how long it took the animators to get into it. If they measure the size of this alien's splatter on the wall, then why is there a need for judges? Enough to pay for a brand new state. 
state-of-the-art synthetic heart that will be even better than Mr. Smith's pathetic penis. Wait, that was an option the whole time? Yep, the A story, B story, I don't know what the f*** it is. It's even more pointless than the interdimensional cable shows. Whoa, wait a second. Is that Medea in a Duck Dynasty show? I can't decide if I want to remove a sin or- I'm a marine biologist who was bitten by an octopus. Damn, how far down the chalkboard was this premise when you brainstormed this episode? Oh my God. I'm a good person. With a plan to what exactly? Stick your penis in the open cavity of a patient during surgery? How is this proving Jerry is a good person? I know he's an idiot, but is he this much of an idiot? This is my butthole ice cream parlor. Goddamn show, so now you're resorting to humor and semi stealing from that Nathan for you episode where he convinced an ice cream parlor to sell a poo flavor. You were shot like 50 times, 57. Thankfully, you're in a super sophisticated alien hospital, so it was basically like getting a splinter removed. But replacing a penis like structure for shrimply pibbles was too difficult for this hospital. You can't make people like you. You just have to wait for hating you to bore them. CinemaSins long term strategy somehow finds its way into a Rick and Morty episode. I mean, seriously, how do eye holes make any money? And this asshole traveled from another dimension to stop Jerry from eating them. Penis. 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 With your human penis. Balls. Their entire culture is built around their penises. Balls. You've got such and such for a penis. Balls. You would give your penis? Balls. Take my penis. Balls. These guys, they want to completely remove my penis. Balls. His penis Balls. will be replaced. If you want to keep your penis, Balls. I prefer to keep my penis. Balls. If the universe needed his penis. Balls. Use your penis. Balls. You just wrote my penis Balls. a one-way ticket. I prefer my own penis. Balls. This guy's trying to get out of giving away his penis. Balls. Trying to weasel out of his penis Balls. donation and Mr. Smith's pathetic penis. Balls. Balls. That you cut off my penis. Balls. Remove my penis. Balls. Remove my penis, Balls. sir. I gotta tell you, Rick, it's pretty great to be in this spaceship, just the two of us, you know? Mentioning a Grover Washington classic and not breaking out into song immediately after. Just the two of us. We can sin it if we try. Just the two of us. Myself and I. I'm all alone. Relax, that's what windshields are for. Once you break through Earth's atmosphere, shouldn't it be called a vacuum shield? I love doing space sins because it's the surest way to make sure I'm wrong about something no matter how long I research it. Also, in this case, vacuum shields are also for keeping breathable atmosphere inside your vehicle. In fact, I'd say that's probably enough of the primary purpose that this plot catalyst bug protection is nothing more than a side benefit. I didn't know that there were bugs out in space. Doubling down on the space sins, would a bug in space have those kind of wings? What do they even flap against? This space bug is a lie. Yeah, I guess I'm out of fluid. That would immediately freeze, or float away, or something unrelated to what it would be intended for. Space! For millennia, our society has been free of crime and war, living in perfect peace. Oh, I know what this is! Interrupting someone in the middle of their story or explanation. One night a year, where you all run around robbing and murdering each other without consequence. Thinking legal ramifications are the only things that fall into the category of consequences. It's like The Purge, Morty. That, that movie, The Purge. You're gonna have to be more specific. There are five of them now. Five of them! And they aren't even done making them yet! You know, sometimes it's called the cleansing or the red time. So on the planet where it's called the red time, does it happen monthly instead of annually? Cause I think you may have misunderstood. Hey Justin, I'm getting ready to design a creature that'll only be on the show for a few seconds. What do you think? Does it have two phallic appendages on its face? Yep. Between them, does the mouth look vaguely vulvish? You know it. A couple other boobs? Way ahead of you. Hmm. Maybe a brown animated blob by the butt so you can't tell if the animal has a tail or if it's mid poop. Dan, you're a genius. Why don't you have some candy bars as well? Aliens not only speak perfect English, but can also sell earth items such as wiper fluid and candy bars. Also, the candy bars have English written on them, but all the store signage is in an alien language. This planet is the worst. How can you be into this? Seriously, after almost two seasons of these shenanigans, how is Morty surprised by anything at this point? Why his reaction? What? Why? Bilching your words. In space, we have something we call the non-interference policy. Since f***ing when? Leave you alone. During a purge? I don't think so, baby. Explaining you're unable to stop purging as you stop purging to explain about being unable to stop purging. What part of that gives me anything to work with? My choice is to say nothing, be sarcastic, or bark yes like a trained animal. You forgot the fourth option. Explain the situation metacontextually in order to launch a B-plot no one will ever remember when thinking of this episode. You know, like a typical teenager. I don't want to answer any more purge questions. That's funny, I heard Ethan Hawke say this exact sentence at a boyhood press conference in 2014. Can you imagine being the doofus that asked Ethan Hawke a second question about the purge when he's there for a Link Later movie? This sentence is for oblivious Stevens from How Do Idiots Like This Get Into These Press Events Weekly. 
You just now remembered your Nana exists. Rick calls her Thrisha out on her bullshit, but still follows her into the house, which is clearly a trap to get his gun and steal his ship. Even if she sucks at it, somehow Little Mouse on the Prairie here manages to fly a space vehicle she's never interacted with before. One that we already know has sentience and security measures in place. Heads up, rapists. Assuming the criminal intent of purgers. Purge them. Me? No, me. Should I rub my liver hole on them? <laughs> I only had one of those things I threw. I'm holding a box of Tic Tacs right now. Saying this out loud, while within close range of your adversaries. It's the space phone grandpa gave us. Keeping the space phone your grandpa gave you underneath the couch cushions. How is that helpful, Summer? F***ing Summer. There's a pile of silverware next to you and you throw me the one thing that can never kill anything? He says directly after killing something with it. Morty, if I can get to the top of that lighthouse, I can send the beacon and your sister can launch our package. Having a plan that involves a step of having your sister launch your package. By the way, life on other planets exists. Don't let it distract you. Oh, don't worry. No one here seems phased by your alien existence unless it's needed for the plot or a joke. And I don't sense either of those things present here. Fade in. Exterior. Unnamed city. Day. Reading. Also forcing someone to listen to you reading your screenplay. This is not her day. Fade to black. Title. Three weeks earlier. In media's res. How are these screwdrivers attached to the wall? Velcro? Double-sided tape? Doesn't that affect the grip? And why do you even need them accessible on your wall? Toolboxes have been sufficient for hundreds of years, Rick. Hundreds of years. Do you have any thoughts? Notes? No, I, I, I just enjoyed it. That's my note, you know? Morty would be terrible at CinemaSins. I'm not a huge fan, personally, of the whole three weeks earlier teaser thing. I feel like, you know, we should start our stories where they begin. Morty would be excellent at CinemaSins. You're a petty person and you're insecure, and you're taking it out of me. That's a good script. I'm not sure how the writers of Rick and Morty hacked my email, but at least they got some benefit from my feedback from the studio's folder. Whoa, Morty, we're guests here. And is this lighthouse full of healing magic? Because Rick's gun wound seems to have healed nicely. He's walking around like he hasn't been shot in the gut for at least the last 10 minutes. You like that? You want me to cut to three weeks earlier when you were alive? <laughs> this show is just the best. Cut to one sin earlier when you didn't have as many sins. Remember when we used to go to the playground and I'd push you on the swings? Oh, you could push me higher than all the other kids. Why was he pushing other people's kids? I guess this is what rock bottom feels like, Jerry. Being part of a B-plot so uninteresting and pointless that the story only spent a total of 2 minutes and 16 seconds on it in the entire episode? Yeah, I can see what you mean. How did the beacon track Rick and Morty to this spot? They left the homing device at the lighthouse. Okay, Morty, now you're just shooting corpses. Necroside. Honestly, I've, I've had my fill. It's gratuitous at this point. Rick admits a fall to the show before doubling down and partaking even further in that fault anyway. I feel like we've sinned this so much it's probably repetitive by this point. No need to sin it again, I suppose. Coordinated blood dancing. It feels good! It's a f***ing hit song! Top the charts, I think! Explaining your references. You picked the wrong man to push, movie. Troutman. First Blood. 1982. I need food. Who's got food for that guy? I do, but this is for me. This sociopolitical commentates on for some time. And while I'm making food for everyone, who takes care of my kids? Not being able to cook food and watch your kids at the same time. That's not a real job. Trying to explain my job to anyone in my family over 50 somehow makes its way into this episode. Jerry, get a job. Okay, fine. Two minutes and 44 seconds. I'm just saying if this entire B-plot was built on the Taddy Madison skill, you'd only owe $5.47. The trick to cereal is keeping 70% of it above the milk. This blanket statement presumes that all cereal has the same absorption rate. 70% may make sense for cornflakes or Cheerios, but you definitely want to land somewhere between 50 to 60% for Fruit Loops or Cocoa Puffs. And God forbid you veer into shredded wheat territory and end up with one of those big old Ted Lasso biscuits. You don't want to let that thing soak for five days minimum. Maybe in a mixture of equal parts vinegar and dish soap, after which you toss that in the trash and figure out what you're doing with your life. It's like the intergalactic version of UPS, but less off-putting. Throwing shade at UPS and pretending like FedEx and Amazon also haven't been leaving packages at the end of my driveway. And outside of the fence. Our TV signals take light years to reach this planet. Nobody tell them that Braveheart wins. First off, a light year is a measure of distance, not time. Second off, how about a spoiler alert, Rick? I'm only up to 1987 on my Academy Award rewatch. And I feel a little lost because I haven't seen the first Emperor yet. What the hell is a bird person? He's Rick's best friend. Jerry said what? Not who. And even then, bird person is much more than just Rick's best friend. He's so many things. Weddings are basically funerals with cake. Cute marriage equals death cliche. But if that were true, then funerals with cake would have to basically be weddings. And speaking from experience, I can tell you they are not. 
You just say what's in your squanch, and people understand. Oh, okay. Well, squanching squanches before casually squanching about some squanches is exactly the kind of squanch that makes me both squanch and squanch this show. And with all my squanch, I can't squanching squanch how I squanch about the squanchingly squanch bit of narrative squanch. Am I right? Maybe it's possible that Rick and family beat Jerry here, but I have no way to prove it either way, so I'm going to send it to be safe. And because I'm an asshole. You say you get it, but I'm scared you'll keep doing it. Title of my sex tape? Look, here's some humans you can practice on. Title of the sequel to my sex tape? Blood Ridge on Clap Flap's third moon. Show uses a variation of the word flap cliche. Ah, huh, sounds like you and my dad have a long history together. This conversation gives us insight into Beth's fractured relationship with her father as well as her insecurities and deficits and the interplay between all three. But it also gives us some hilariously delivered expositional backstory about Bird Person and Rick. The strange thing is I'm not even mad about the exposition. In fact, I welcome it. What is wrong with me? Bird Person, you are my seed, my worm, my earliness. Surely one cannot be both the seed and the worm. Plus, lateness is generally more common when the first two come into play. Pulling out someone's innards, even jokingly. I am a cyborg photographer. Just act natural. This is a candid shot. I'm not sure if the cyborg gaze is problematic or not, but until I can collect more data, I'm going to assume it's a precursor to Terminator Salvation. And I'm doing everything I can to prevent that from happening again. <laughs> Writers didn't save this joke for its Rick Sanchez in the Temple of Squanch episode. Also, they really turned this joke on its head. Being nice is something stupid people do to hedge their bets. You know, as funny as it is, this is the kind of sh** that serves as a driving force behind the show's toxic fandom. And if you're offended by that, it's fair to assume you're part of the problem. Now you may be thinking, that was a mean thing to say. Well, being nice is something stupid people do to hedge their bets. Bird murder. Birder? The laser fire from these blasters killed Bird Person, but barely leaves a scratch on what we can assume from the instrument and location are referred to as baseballs. Squanchy is a dick to someone's balls for no reason. This catering space fan has super convenient worm-based countermeasures. Also, the Smiths are super lucky the Galactic Federation hasn't realized the benefits of spaceships that don't immediately explode when they slightly bump into each other. When they develop that technology, Rick will really have to pull some signs out of his ass. F you, Summer. Saying f you to your granddaughter. Well, at least in this case. You can't say f, f you to your granddaughter? We already covered this, Morty. Say you don't watch TV sins without saying you don't watch TV sins. Now who wants to go shopping for a brand new motherfucking world? Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos making plans for the weekend. If the Smiths think a star screaming for 42 hours is the worst of it, wait till they see its coronal mass ejections after eating a space burrito. Maybe I can buy that the space fan had a TV handy and that Rick had some sort of interdimensional cable thumb drive with him or something. I mean, I don't want to buy it, but I'm going to try to get past it. However, I do not buy that they build a f***ing log cabin in this short amount of time. Also, I've decided I can't get past the working TV and cable signal thing. So... We discovered a species of tiny pig off the coast of New Australia. We'd offer you some, but we hunted it to extinction for breakfast. I know the whole joke is that living on this tiny planet is clearly not sustainable. However, the idea that not only Rick, the smartest man in the universe, but the entire family, excluding Jerry, of course, wouldn't have foreseen this food shortage as a problem is pretty laughable. Especially when you consider that later in the show, Rick casually goes to a bar before turning himself in. Surely they could whip up some disguises to pick up groceries at the nearest intergalactic grocery store. Morty effortlessly sending this frisbee around the entire planet raises multiple questions about the gravity here and how they're able to walk around like normal. Uh, all right, just the one question, I guess. Morty, if you go to where there's a bunch of ice cream and then you don't come back, you haven't actually gotten ice cream. You've just gone where ice cream is. Rick would be squanchingly good at TV sense. Where's the van, Morty? It's over the horizon, in the driveway. I'm not going to send Rick asking Morty where the van is when he's the only person we've seen driving it. I'm not going to send Rick asking where the van is before checking the driveway. But I am going to send the fact that they built a driveway for a space van instead of a launching pad. I'm Jerry Smith. And I love sucking big, sweaty boners and licking disgusting, furry testicle sacks. Uh, okay. Only Rick and Morty could have stuck the landing on the transition from that statement to the use of non-diegetic music to convey turmoil and the general emotional toll of Rick's life. Of the Galactic Federation. I feel better. Show expects us to believe that medicine works this quickly. And as someone who's sitting here an hour later waiting for his edible to kick in, I'm calling bullshit. And this unicorn that's been hanging out with me for the last hour totally agrees. Eh, hey, what are you in for? Everything. 
<laughs> I really hate cliffhangers like this. If we're gonna put a character's fate in jeopardy, at least make it someone that we might believe will be stuck in this prison or killed. We know Rick won't be killed, and we know Rick won't spend the rest of the series in prison. This cliffhanger is all kinds of squanch. <laughs> the blatant disrespect for this pizza. This might actually bother me more than the cliffhanger nonsense. Why would you do that to a piece of pizza that did nothing to you? Because you're a monster, that's why. Guess you guys aren't ready for that yet, but your kids are gonna love it. Are you okay? Yeah, that's gonna s on me, you. So what we'll do is we'll rig a bus so that when it goes below 50 miles an hour, it blows up. What the f is that? Oh god, now there's three of them! There are too many of them. What are we going to do? How misguided are you? I feed you a couple of bullshit legal precedents, and there you go. You jump on it like a bitch in heat. How's it going, Bill and Ted? Ted. It's us again. So that's how it's gonna be. Y'all wanna play. Okay, then. I've got my eye on you, Jay Quellen. That's right, Mrs. Smith. Give in to your anger. Let the hate flow through you. They take their balls and they dip them in cocaine. I wanna dip my balls <laughs> in it! Are you Crombopulous Michael's target? Very good, Tin Man. The world can be one together Cosmos without hatred Stars like diamonds in your eyes It's business It's business time You know what those guys do in, a, in, the, in their fancy boardrooms? I take Quaaludes 10 to 15 times a day for my back pain Adderall to stay focused Xanax to take the edge off, pot to mellow me out, cocaine to wake me back up again. You do understand I'm telepathic, right? Pick a color. Blue. Pick a number, 17. All right, I'll call the two grand, I'll gamble. Don't splash the pot. And in my club, I will splash the pot whenever the f I please. What is that? That's what we're gonna find out. Balloon Summer, Balloon Morty. I don't like chicken, and I hate clowns. Oh, yeah! No, Kelly Clarkson! We are the Borg. Blow your shields and surrender your ships. But Uncle Steve taught me how to ride a bike. Steve! Buttons don't work better if you hit them harder, and foam fists don't make you strong. Well, what's my father ever done that's so great? School superintendent? Big whoop! There's only like 800 kids in the entire county! Now I believe someone has a final exam to attend. Wesley? Marmalade is served. Uh, Marmalade! Loma, king of rope. That's rock, Loma. But you still can't be in our band. But they have been punky wing TV contest. Fast lane, switching lanes with a car by my side. Shut up, Hammer Eye. Shut up, Amish Cyborg. What is this, 90s Conan? In the year 2000. Face, the final frontier. A giant head has entered Earth's gravity, triggering climate change and natural disasters we thought were impossible for at least another eight years. Look at the size of that boy's head. Time to go, Morty. Uh, where? The Pentagon. Yeah! 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 You can't fight in here. This is the war room. You're going to want to put them on that giant speaker system at your sonic testing facility at Area 51. Guess you'd like to see the big tamale, huh? When God deals you an 11, you don't fold. And you always double down on 11. And what's your plan, General? We still have the nuclear option. On my word, we can launch a missile at every one of those heads in the sky. Hey, you better find yourself some place to hide and keep praying nobody ever finds you. What? Now you're thinking with portals. In this universe, there's only one absolute. Everything freezes. What's with these people, man? Lemonade. Read the sign. Lemonade. The best ice cream in the multiverse. I had some ice cream, and I'm gonna eat it all. No, stop! Don't kill him! I thought about our dilemma, and I came up with a solution that I honestly think works out best for one of both of us. That just sounds like slavery with extra steps. We live in a society where honor to distant memory. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. 
Now slap on these antenna. These people need to think we're aliens. Right, right. Somebody said alien. She thought they said illegal alien and signed up. Nothing you do matters. Your existence is a lie. Yeah, you two. The incredible Turbo Team! I think it's okay to dream, Morty. I'm gonna go make some wooden steaks. <laughs> Pleasant little creature. What's his problem? He's got a cold. Hunting a vampire with my grandkids! Now, this is not gonna be pretty. We're talking violence, strong language, adult content. Surprise, motherfucker. All right, everybody, this next one's coming straight from the heart, making the lyrics up right off the top of my head. Let me out, what you see is not the same person as me. My life's a lie. I'm not. My children make this on martyred flesh! My home planet is far away and long since gone. Please excuse his lack of decorum. His enthusiasm outweighs his discretion. That's right, assholes. Take my penis. But they'll never take our freedom! I didn't know that there were bugs out in space. You mean bugs? I hate bugs! Boy, you want to give me one good reason why you would steal a Snickers bar. The nougat? Why don't you have some candy bars as well? Shut up. I like candy. Also, if you tell your mom about this, I'll purge you. Are you threatening me? My bunghole will not wait. I see shit like that for breakfast, Morty. But if you don't do it, I say it's because you're afraid of your own primal instincts. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. I squant my family. I... What? I do. I squant my family. Frank, you disgust me. You disgust everyone. You know, you're not being very supportive of a burnt person on his big day. How about this? Shut your mouth, or I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. Squatch this, mofo. Not using it right, Joe. Ah, oh, sounds like you and my dad have a long history together. Wish I could say the same. With all due respect, what the f are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not right. You know, when I first met Bird Person, he was... Listen, I'm not the nicest guy in the universe. And for the record, my name's not Ted Peterson. It's Han Solo, named after the man who made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. And I am a burger, like my father before me. Also, I want to tell everyone here that I've got a pretty huge New Kids on the Block tattoo on my back. The heads are warped, but f you guys, it's funny. How it feels to chew five gum. Stimulate your senses. Welcome to Earth. 